Hello everybody, this is Sirik 1983 and welcome back to Neverwinter Nights. Alright, so this episode we're going to be talking to a few of our henchmen to get them to level up and finish off their tails as well. So let's talk to Tommy first. I figured they'd drag Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> eh? What can Tommy Level up. Ooh, he's blue. Alright, let's talk to him. Eh? Let's go talk, uh, continue your story. Aye, the Knight of the Jewel Heist, right? I suppose you've been a fine friend, my lord. I can tell you about it. The gem we were after was no other than the f none other than the fabled Star of Kalimshan. It's not the most valuable ruby in the land, but certainly one of the more notorious. According to legend, the Pashas of Kalimshan gifted it to their wives on their wedding night, and the stone glows from within, filled with the tears of their lost innocence, or so the story goes. My daring plan, and Sammy's, was to pluck this stone from the depths of the royal palace and fr from the very chambers of the Sil Pasha's wife herself. Why steal it if it wasn't valuable? The ruby's value is more in the fame one would get, my lord. The Sil Pasha would never rest until he captured whoever was responsible for its theft. At any rate, the night came. Sammy and Rigar stole into the palace ahead of me, with Sammy having no idea of my presence. Rigar left a trail that was quite easy to follow. I remember being impressed at the time that things were going so well. No guards alerted, no problems whatsoever. I thought maybe Sammy's foul luck had finally turned for once. And then? Well, of course, Sammy tripped over his fold in the carpet and took a spill into a suit of armor. It fell over him into two others, and the resulting clatter would have woken Nebuchadnezzar's dead brother-in-law. Poor Rieger turned white as a virgin's dainty bottom when he saw the horde of soldiers charging down the hall. He leapt out the, water, out the window without first considering we were over the lion pit. <laughs> Poor fellow. Uh, what happened to Sammy? The guards ran right past the pile of armor. Didn't even think to look for a small halfling buried under there. Lucky for Sammy. Anyway, good old Sammy gave some, give old Sammy some credit for stubbornness. He climbed out from under that armor and still came for the ruby. Found me plucking it from its pedestal, in fact. He was surprised to see me, to say the least. I decided to give him a piece of my mind, as I recall. Why, Sammy? I said, why did you betray me? I have never done anything to you. Oh, he must have liked that. I never got to hear his response. Oddly, he just turned all purple and his eyes bulged out and he spluttered a lot. It looked rather like some outraged kobold. <laughs> guards ran guards ran in just then and it was pandemonium. There was fighting and screaming and running. Last I remember, I dived into the sea and woke up three days later on freighter bound for Tharsalt. Want to hear the funny part? For all that Sammy was a terrible thief, he was a wonderful pickpocket. Stole the ruby off me, he did, and I had nothing to show for all that. What happened to Sammy? Not sure exactly. I'd heard he'd ended up on a slave ship and somehow got sold to one of the high captains in Port Luskin. Poor sod. <laughs> me, I'd like to track down that ruby one of these days. The Star of Kalimshan. Uh, it'd still be worth it to make me famous. Uh, perhaps we'll find a ruby sometime. But thanks, my lord. You're quite a friend yourself. Now let's get on with your quest, shall we? Alrighty. So yes, he's looking for the Star of Kalimshan. Let's talk to Dalen next. I've been waiting for you. Yes, yes, yes. Yes? Level up. And is purple. Yes? Is there something you need? Uh, talk, uh, continue your story. You have been a true friend to me, Kel. I have been reluctant to speak to you of this, but you did help me recover my mother's brooch. Perhaps you can help me with this as well. I was not completely honest with you about, my reason, about the reasons I left my tribe. It is true I was sent away to prove myself, but there was another reason as well. My mother's death was a violent one. She was brutally slain in a bandit raid on her camp, and I have vowed not to return to my tribe until I avenge her murder. Do you know who killed her? I was out hunting with a band of warriors when the attack came. The raiders hid and waited for us to leave, and then sneaked in with the advantage of numbers. My tribe was outnumbered nearly two to one, but they managed to drive the attackers off. Three of our warriors fell in the battle, as did my mother. How are you going to track down the bandit who killed her? Do you remember when I told you of the, my vision quest? How my mother's brooch would bring me dreams to guide my quest? Last night I had a dream. My mother's spirit sent me this vision. I am certain of it. In my dream I saw a terrible axe dripping blood from its notched blade. It was the weapon used to slay her. If I can find the axe, I will ha know I have found her killer. You may think me a fool, Kel, but I believe I will find that axe. I must, or my mother's spirit will never truly be at peace. I will not abandon the search for the cultists behind the plague. I have pledged my blade to you, and it is yours as long as you need me. But I also vow that I will not rest until I find the axe with the notched blade that slew my mother. This axe has a notched blade. Is this the one you saw in your vision? Yes. Yes, that is the blood-soaked blade that has haunted my dreams. Then, the one who wields it is dead? Yes, he was a dwarf named Gorkin. 
They told me there was a sinister dwarf among the bandits, one of many to escape the battle. Then it is over. My mother is avenged, and her spirit can finally rest. Thank you, Kel. Once again, you have proven yourself to be the greatest of friends. Words cannot properly explain the, the gratitude I feel. I regret that I can offer you nothing as a reward but my thanks, my friendship, and my courage in battle. The reward you offer is greater than you know, Dalen. Thank you again, Kel. My mother is avenged, and your spirit is at peace. Now let us return to the task at hand. Those behind the Wailing Death must still be dealt with. Alrighty then. Alright, let's talk to Grimnaw next. I have been and, uh, is there some level up? Whoa, cool. <laughs> All right. Is there some talk? Uh, continue your story. My order has many secrets, Kel. Secrets we do not reveal to those outside our monastery. Yet you have proven yourself a friend of the Long Death before. You aided me in finding the Ring of Eleganda. I believe you would have hel helped me bring Death to her had she still been alive when we found her. Perhaps you can be of service to my order once more, for without your aid, I fear my brothers and sisters will never escape their terrible fate. Well, what do you want me to do? I should begin by explaining what happened after we burned the Lich's lair. The corpses of our own, those who had risen against us, were brought back to the monastery of my order. There we sought to enact ancient rituals to release their essence from the curse that had bound them to their animated corpses, but the chains of undeath are not easily broken. The ancient rituals require rare components, and we had many casualties. A few we were able to save, but the others remain trapped in undeath until we can find more of the necessary components for the ritual. What kind of components are you looking for? The components must come from the crypt of a powerful undead monster, but it must be something that has not yet been tainted by the creature's necromancy. For example, we, were, we would require the preserved hand of from an inanimate corpse within a mummy's crypt. Only the power of such an item can release the essence of my brothers and sisters into, into the grasp of the Silent Lord. I will not abandon the search for the cultists behind the plague. I have pledged to aid you in destroying those who release the foul taint of the Wailing Death. But during our search, I will not give up my search for the mummified hand of an inanimate corpse that can release my brethren from undeath. I have a mummified hand here. Will this do? Let me see. Yes, this may work. The taint of undeath has not yet contaminated the desiccated flesh of this limb. Look at this severed hand, Kel. See how the withered flesh has grown so tight and thin it exposes the delicate perfection of the bones beneath? Isn't it beautiful? I thank you for this, Kel, on behalf of the Order of the Long Death. I have no reward to give you save the blessing of my order. The reward you offer is greater than you know, Grimna. You will find that the blessing has enhanced the properties of the amulet I have given you when you found Eleganda's ring for me. Once again, Kel, I thank you. Now let us return to the task at hand. Those behind the Wailing Death must still be dealt with. Alrighty, and yes, his amulet. Oh yeah, Dalen's as well. He upgraded it. He has strength plus three. Which means that my modifier gets, also gets a bump with it. <laughs> and then the amulet is also getting a plus three with the constitution, and that is enough to bo boost my uh, uh, modifier. So, awesome. Alright, next, let's finish off with Body Knock. You're back. Yes. Is there something you level up? Hey, new days. All right. Is there something you talk? Uh, continue your story. The pain of what happened to my father, of how I destroyed the garden he had spent a lifetime cultivating, is a very personal pain, Kel. But you have proved yourself to be a good friend. After all, it was you who helped me find the leaven bread. I suppose it is only logical to expect you to might be able to help me with my father as well. What do you want me to do? I know I can never replace the many varieties of plants and flowers that were once in my father's garden, but perhaps if I make a grand gesture he will find it in his heart to forgive me. Throughout my father's life there has been one flower he has longed to see more than any other, but one which he has never been able to acquire. Among the great library of Lantern there are accounts of the prism blossom, a living growing flower whose petals are said to change color and reflect light as if they were made of crystal. So why don't you get him one of these prism, prism blossoms? The account of the flower occurs in only one text, the travel diary of an explorer who died several centuries ago after returning from a journey to the north. No one has ever been able to locate this rare flower or its gleaming crystal seeds, though many have spent a lifetime searching for it. It may be the prism blossom is only a myth, Kel, but if I could find the seeds of this flower and give them to my father, I am certain he would forgive me for, my, for destroying his garden. I will not abandon the search for the cultists behind the plague. I have pledged to aid you in destroying those who release the foul taint of the Wailing Death. But part of me is hoping that in our journeys we will be lucky enough to stumble across the crystalline seeds of the Prism Blossom. Don't worry, I'm sure we'll find the seeds where you're looking for. 
You are a true friend, Kel. With you by my side, I'm certain we will somehow find the seeds of the Prism Blossom, if they still exist. Alrighty. Alright, so that's pretty much all of the tales from our, for our uh, henchman. We, obviously, he's looking for some seeds. Uh, we already got Grimna, and Tommy's looking for a ruby. But we have one more person to talk to, and that is Erebeth. But I think when I was talking to Aaron, I think I saw a little conversation piece there regarding Erebeth. So let's talk to Aaron again. The gods smile on us that you remain yet unharmed for your efforts. With luck, success shall soon follow. I would rather talk about something else. Aye. What would you have of me? How does Erebeth fare? I would not normally speak of this, but I am told that you and the Lady Paladin have formed a bond of friendship. Erebeth has stirred from her grief, but not as I'd hoped. She has replaced it with a frightening rage that she almost cannot contain. She storms about, brooding and filled with bitterness, and lashing out at all who come near her. I do not know if anything can even be done. Perhaps you could speak to her. All right, I'll give it a shot. I'll be going. I shall await your return, then. Be safe, and Godspeed. Well, sounds like things have been uh, bugging Erebeth, so I guess, well, like it's up to us to, uh, I guess, give her a li an ear to use, and uh, maybe some advice if she's looking for it, uh, but I guess we'll have to find out what's on her mind next time. This is Sirik 1983 signing off. Thank you for watching, and have a good one.